Hi, I'm Nathan. Every week I do comic book reviews because that's the rule around my house. If I want to keep buying comic books, then I have to review them every week. So this review is going to be for The Walking Dead number 85. Uh, I will save this early on. That if you're watching this but you don't read The Walking Dead, then you want to read The Walking Dead because you want to read it first before I talk about it. I'm going to tell you everything that happens more or less or talk about the things that happen. I'll probably skip over some parts. Um, it's one of my favorite books. It's the book that I will probably always buy as long as it's around, uh, even if I don't buy any other comic books, even if I'm down to my last two ninety nine or three yeah two ninety nine that I have to my name. This will probably be the book that I buy if, if I can't afford anything else because it's so great. Uh, so as you may or may not know, hopefully you know because you took my advice and read the book before you watched this. Uh, Rick's son Carl got shot in the face at the very end of the last issue. And, well, maybe it was two issues ago, and then last issue took him to the doctor, and they patched him up or whatever. So he's still out cold in this one, and they are dealing with the repercussions of the giant battle that just happened where they killed, like, a hundred-something zombies or whatever that were all invading their little town at the same time. Um... And there's some awesome stuff in here. I mean, even in the first page, or the first two pages here, where, uh, if you can check out that panel here. There you go. Uh, there's a little dirty words in there, but basically, it's, um, what is his name? I can't remember his name. But the big guy that basically heads up the killing team or whatever, uh, he's struggling with putting all these bodies into piles and burning them from the zombies or whatever. And I really got the feeling there that this is a lot of work and I would, they would totally suck to do that, to move hundreds of bodies into piles and burn them at the same time. And then right on the very next page, as they're uncovering bodies, you see the chick, the lady, the mother that Rick was so into that he reluctantly had to cut her hand off because she wouldn't let go of his son and she was dragging them into the zombies. Um, and he talks about that a little bit here too. And Glenn, uh, Rick's friend who knew this lady and knew her son, I'm really glad they didn't show her son because her son was eaten and she was hanging on to him. And then she got zombified apparently, partially eaten. Uh, found her and was expected to take care of him. Abraham, that's a guy's name. But Abraham does it anyway. And a really cool thing is you see in Abraham that this has just become a part of life. It's not a big deal. You know, he's got to do everything. Everybody's making him do the work because they, they're still taken aback. They're still like, they have that sense of humanity about them when they see a zombie that they know or the but they knew the person it's like really shocking to them whereas to him that's a just fact that's what you go on with so the rest of the story is more about uh rick talking to carl he happens to mention to the doctor slash nurse about how he had to basically send that woman to her death by cutting her hand off because she wouldn't let go of his son uh and she is completely shocked and saddened by it so right as he was saying that, I was like, no way, dude, don't tell her. And you know he's sitting there, and he's thinking about it and just saying it. He's not thinking about who he's saying it to. Uh, and you know she's going to spill the beans to somebody else, and that it's going to be this whole huge issue with most people, but not everybody, you know, possibly a rebellion later on. So, uh, and then in the story you get Abraham's girlfriend finding out that he had been hooking up with a different girl, uh, and the end of their relationship. You get uh, Glenn and his wife Maggie happy that they made it through it together and sad that everybody else is dead. They have funerals for the people who died. And then they start discussing improvements to their little city uh, about uh, their little town, I should say. It's small enough to be a town. Uh, that they can make to make it more fortified and safe. Because Rick has had this 180 idea after seeing everybody coming together and getting rid of this horde of zombies that they never thought they'd ever be able to overcome, they do it. And he's amazed, and he comes to the realization that instead of running from these problems constantly, 
uh, which has probably gotten people killed along the way. They need to figure out, use their brains, think about it, and come up with ways to prevent them from happening or um, to get out of it. So that's the direction that they're going to take. They're going to make a stand, more or less, for however long it lasts to make this place better. And they have some really cool ideas, um, you know, the kind of stuff that you would uh, hear about zombie fans or fans of, you know, the apocalypse or whatever what they would do to fortify the thing. There's all kinds of zombie stories out there these days, so a lot of those are really good ideas that you would see elsewhere also. But uh, it's really interesting. Again, it's a really good book. It felt a little short, mostly because this book is so thick because you get a witch doctor at number zero, like the full issue on the other half of this book, which I did not read, but I probably will at some point. Uh... I saw a little preview of it previously, and it was okay, but I, I, didn't, I didn't. I got tired of reading all nine books that I bought this week, and uh, went ahead and stopped right as I got into the letter hacks and started skimming over that stuff, because it was a lot to read and get out all on Wednesday night. So, uh, again, this series is really awesome. Uh, there is really only one point in this specific issue that was amazing, which is, you know, having that woman come back and they have to deal with her as a personal part instead of burying her with everybody else. I don't know if they buried her, they probably did. But they had to, you know, de-zombify her or kill her again. And you really feel like Abraham's getting so tired of being the one that has to do everything. It really seemed weird, too, that they're going through all these bodies and they're, like, grabbing around these heads and these uh, shoulders and stuff and not really afraid that these things are going to bite them or anything. Oh, another cool thing is when they're at the funeral, everybody's wearing coats. It's one of my favorite things about this uh, series. You can see here. It's like light coats, fall. Uh, they did have a Halloween a little while ago. These are actually heavy coats in a lot of cases. So you can tell it's the onset or the beginning of winter where it hasn't really started fully snowing yet, but it's still really cold outside. And that's really cool about this whole series that the seasons change, the years change, people change. It's great. I mean, there's actual some time to it. And I, I think people have talked about how the time progresses in the Walking Dead series, but who knows, right? It, it's probably out there if you're really interested. Again, really good series. Uh, you really should read it from the beginning if you're not reading it. Uh, it's probably the only one that I would continue buying were the sky to fall and I couldn't buy any others uh, again this issue specifically I would probably give a three out of five there's some interesting parts to it but you really don't find out anything that you didn't know before and you're kind of leading into the next direction that the, the book's gonna take so there you go three out of five pretty average for that I'd probably get a, a four out of five if I wasn't rating it against itself all the other Walking Dead issues especially the last one or the one before there you go. Three out of five. Walking Dead. Check out my other reviews at Spidey207 on YouTube or as Pete Parker on iFanboy, uh, Comic Vine, or the Marvel and DC databases. I'm at all of those. So anywhere you look for Pete Parker's video reviews, you'll probably find mine. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. See ya.